So I hear you asking, what is this? This is what I'm going to be using to dome the end of the rivet. Okay, so I have a few of them of various different sizes and you might recognize these as a nail set or a nail setter. So in carpentry, whenever you bang a nail in, sometimes you want it to sit below the surface. So what you do is you get a nail setter, put it over the head of the nail, and then use a hammer to bang the nail below the surface, and then you can fill it in with wood filler and then paint it, and you wouldn't know there was a nail there. Okay, one of the uses. We're gonna be modifying a nail setter into a rivet setter. And the main difference is the ends. As you can see, they're nicely domed, perfectly domed, and they're also highly reflective because of course they're polished. So how do you go from a standard nail setter? And I'll give you an example. So this is uh, your average store-bought set of uh, nail setters of various different sizes. And as you can see, with the ends of them, they're just cup-shaped, they're dome-shaped, so there's a concave cup. Uh, and they're very, very rudimentary, rather agricultural in uh, finesse. But I'm gonna be using one of these just to demonstrate that even with just a cheap one of these, and I encourage you to spend a little bit more money perhaps, but <laughs> this set was five pounds from a local store that I bought. But if you buy something a little bit nicer, probably a well-known brand name, you're gonna get a little bit higher quality steel as well. But I'm gonna be using one of these to demonstrate how to turn it from that into that, which is useful, whereas this is not so useful. And at the end of it, just as a little added bonus, I'm gonna show you how to install a rivet with a polish finished with one of these. Uh, so if you're not interested in the process that I'm gonna take you through to convert a nail set into a rivet set, then you don't absolutely have to. I'm gonna show you an option which makes things a lot simpler just using one of these to finish it off. But more of that later. What are these? These are diamond burrs. So they're round diamond burrs. And plated to the end where the ball is, is diamond powder. So it's just fine diamond powder. And what I'm going to be using this for is to be spinning at high speed and we're going to uniform the end of the nail setter and begin the first stage of turning it into a rivet setter, okay? Because right now it's rather rough on the inside. Now this size happens to be 2.5 millimeters, I believe. On a three millimeter, I like to use a five millimeter ball. And on a four millimeter, which is what this is, I like to use a six millimeter ball. So for this 2.5, I think we should be okay with a four millimeter ball, which is this one here. So that's what I'll be using for this one. So I don't know if I'll get much use out of this, to be honest, uh, but I will probably use it for very, very small, intricate rivets. But this just serves as an example to show you how it's going to be done. For this, I'm gonna be using a Dremel. This is, just happens to be an extension cable, but you can use the actual Dremel itself. And I'm gonna install that relatively close to the chuck at the end here, which I'm tightening now. And we're gonna be turning it on and keeping it nice and close to the table. If you do it up here, it's very easy for the diamond bit to grab and then spins out and you can you know, ruin the edge of, uh, of your riveter. So keep it nice and close to your table so that your hand is in contact with the table. And the same thing with your rivet setter. We're gonna keep our hand in contact with the table. That just gives us so much more control when we're gonna be moving it in there to uniform that end. Now it goes without saying, we're gonna be putting on our safety glasses. And also I can turn the volume down for you, but I can't turn it down for me. So I'm gonna be wearing some ear protection at the same time. And the speed that I'm gonna be starting at is 15,000 RPM. So a little bit of a slower speed just to be, uh, get to grips with it. You can go a little bit faster if you're a bit more confident with it, but I recommend going uh, slow first of all. So you can see that already it started to uniform the edges 
but the ball that I'm using is obviously very slightly larger than the concave cut out there. So it's only hitting the edges first of all. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit more grinding away to get a little bit further down. Now every so often, if you find the sides start becoming a bit too sharp, you can get rid of that just by getting a diamond plate or you can use a bit of sandpaper, hold it upright so it looks straight down on it and very slightly turn and that will start uniforming the sides a little bit more. If you keep doing that, every so often just turn it a quarter turn, turn it a quarter turn, a few more, maybe 10 circles and then quarter turn. That way if you are holding it off slightly, you're making up for it by the fact that you're turning it to give you a nice uniform flush 90 degree edge. So let's go back to grinding the cup out first of all. Okay, so there we go. So the end is now nice and uniformed. Didn't take too long. It has a little bit of a burr in the outside, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. There we go. Okay, and same again, we're just gonna do little circles. Turn. 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 Lovely, okay. So what I'm gonna do is just check the width of the cup, okay? So not including the edges, I'm not measuring the outside like so. I'm just going mostly by eye actually. I'm looking for 2.5, maybe a little bit more off there. And the more that I actually do this technique, the smaller that cup actually gets. So I can do some minute changes, minute alterations. There we go. Okay, so so right now, if I was to set a rivet with this, it wouldn't look too bad. It wouldn't look too bad. It'd probably be a bit of a satin finish with lots of rings around it, which uh, it would get actually from the diamond burr, imparting that onto here, which would then impart it onto the softer metal. But we want to get a nice polish to this. We want it to shine. So when we set a rivet with it, it takes on that shine. So how do we do that? So what I'm gonna do is take a bamboo skewer and I'm going to just take a knife and then cut off about an inch, okay? So just press down and roll forward on a bamboo skewer. And then you can just carefully snap it and you have your piece. So what's the width of this? Just to give you guys a reference, if you go to a store with your calipers, that would look funny. Four millimeters, so it's a four millimeter. So go and ask them for a uh, <laughs> four millimeter polishing bamboo skewer, please, at your local Walmart. Okay, so there we have it. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna undo the chuck on this diamond burr. I'm gonna undo it all the way. Uh, you might need an aftermarket chuck if the standard one that comes with your Dremel tool or your rotary tool, which is what it's called, if it uh, don't, won't take that size, you might need to uh, get an aftermarket one that can take up to four millimeters. Or even if it can't quite take four millimeters, uh, the wood will compress slightly. Okay, so reasonably tight, not over tight. It's kind of a medium, you'll feel it crushing the wood. Just give it a spin. Okay, what I'm looking for is uh, to make sure that it spins true. If it doesn't spin and it has a wobble, you'll see the end just starts to blur as it spins round. Oh, as if luck would have it, that's exactly perfect. So I'm gonna spin this at a low speed and I'm going to char the end, I'm gonna burn it, okay? So just, you know, a very directional flame like this one because obviously we need to shape it so that it becomes a mirror image to the end of our rivet setter. Some of you may already know where I'm going with this.
And we're going to bring that speed up a little bit more. And now we're going to take the end of your rivet setter and press it in slowly. Rotating. If there's any fluff on the outside, you can just burn that off. Now, just to keep everything nice and clean, we can take a bit of uh, shop towel there, tissue paper, a little bit of white spirit or mineral spirits, so we can clean as we go. Okay, so just clean the end of your setter. Taking some polishing compound, using some uh, Dialux Verde Paris, Verde Paris, which is uh, a green polishing compound ideal for hardened steels, such as tool steel. So medium speed, 15,000 RPM should be about right. Dabbing on the end. And then bringing it in. Okay, it goes black very quickly. A little bit more green. Rotating around, five to 10 seconds. A little bit more. And we're going to keep going until we get the polish that we want. Every so often, check your polish. Just wipe off any excess. And then just have a little look. So it's starting to get a bit of a polish coming on there. Okay, but we need to work on that for a little bit longer. So I'm going to keep going until I'm satisfied that I have the polish that I'm looking for. Now, if you find that there's some deep scratches in there that you just can't get rid of, or you know there's a little pinhole at the bottom that you didn't see before, it just means that you're going to have to go back to the diamond burr and just be very delicate, as in don't press too hard, okay? Just very, very light so that we don't get any deep scratches in there. I mean, the finer the abrasive, the better, really, if you can, uh, if you can find them. So we're going to do probably uh, but maybe another five to ten minutes work on this, uh, and then we should be done. And to finish off, what I like to do is exchange the little piece of wood that we had here with uh, just a felt pad. Okay, this is a rather heavily used one. They screw off and screw on that variety. I'm just going to take some compound on there, and I'm just going to go around the tops, around the edges, and on the inside. As you can see, as you do that, it turns it into a bit of a ball. But this is just going to give that final polish and also polishes the lip around the edge. So if you go down as far as to impact the surface of the lock, you're actually imparting a polished circle to the rivet. So let's turn it on. Okay, so let's give this a bit of a clean up. The mineral spirits, AKA white spirit. So here's a macro close up shot of some various sizes of nail setters. Obviously, the middle one has now been modified. That is our 2.5 millimeter rivet setter. So it's now changed its purpose, but you can clearly see there's a lot more polish compared to the side ones, which are the factory standard. So if you do buy a set, you can obviously 
polish at various different sizes so that you can actually choose which size to use on which rivet. And 2.5 is probably going to be useful for 1.4 to 1.6 millimeter stem thickness uh, rivets. So smaller rivets for smaller bags, smaller locks, smaller hardware, etc. So taking a look at each rivet under the macro lens, we've magnified it several times so you can see a really good close up of it. So this is the first rivet. This is simply a domed rivet. So it's rounded at the top and it doesn't go beneath the surface. The next one is the satin rivet. And as you can see, it kind of blends into the surface of the aluminium and you can kind of see where it transitions. But if it was pure brass, you wouldn't see where it changes over. So that gives you a circular crater around the edge, which is quite popular with a lot of fashion houses. This is the flat top rivet, which is tucked in on the skirt on the side. So it's polished on the sides and at the top, and it catches the light nicely as well. Obviously, when you magnify it several times, you see all the little tiny scratches imparted from the polished hammer. And this is the last one. This one had the skirt, the exterior of the rivet, tucked in with just a standard nail setter, nothing polished, nothing special. So just hammered down with a polished hammer and then tucked in on the side. So you get that polished top, but the side is in matte. So that's the four different types of rivet. And then you can choose which one suits your needs best and which one you prefer.